Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today we're going to take another look at Pop OS. We looked at it when it was in early beta and now it is out officially from System76, a company that produces Linux-based hardware mainly for the US market. So you can buy a computer from System76 and you know for sure that it will run with Linux because it comes shipped with Linux. And for the long history of System76, more than 10 years, they have shipped with Ubuntu. But now System76 has decided that it is a good time for them to come up with their own distribution of Linux. Mainly because Ubuntu, they've had a big shakeup. We've talked about that in past videos. April of this year, they announced the end of the Unity desktop project along with several other projects. They have switched to a GNOME 3 desktop. And when all of that was shaking out, that's when the folks at System76 decided they were going to do this. I have absolutely no affiliation whatsoever with System76. They do not sponsor any of my videos. I do not own any System76 hardware. System76 is a company that I have recommended to people in the past who have asked what hardware they should buy if they're starting out with Linux mainly because everybody that I know that has used System76 has had very positive experiences. They make quality hardware and the machines are nice. So that is my extent of uh, association with System76 making a few recommendations. So I'm going to give you an unbiased review in this here video. Let's take a look around the website first. Well, it's not really a review. I don't want to say that because a review would mean that I would sit here and research and do all this other stuff. and. Uh, it's a, no, this is more like a look at, okay? It's not a review. Let's not use that word because as soon as you bring that up, people go, well, you didn't talk about this and what about that and all that other stuff. So it's not a review. On the website here, they claim that this is a step forward in user experience. And we're going to find out whether that's true because in this video, I'm going to install Pop! OS. When I click on learn more, this is what I get, this little bitty paragraph right there. And if we scroll down, and I do have this rather large to make it easy to see in a video, it will go to download. When we click on download, we have two versions available. The first one is for anybody who has AMD or Intel graphics. And then the second one has NVIDIA graphics baked in. I have NVIDIA graphics running on my hardware. And I did download that image with NVIDIA already in it. And it did not work on my hardware. As a matter of fact, it went into a boot loop from the live USB stick I created. And so therefore, it was pretty much useless. So when they say NVIDIA, they mean the current NVIDIA that they ship. If you have a card that's older, like mine is, mine's actually a bit long in the tooth at this point, it ain't going to work. So you'd have to download the regular version and then install the drivers yourself. That's fine with me. We have the checksums here in case you want to check these images for errors or make sure that nobody has modified them in any way from the original version from System76. Then we have installation instructions. These are pretty straightforward. Most of it takes its time talking about creating a USB stick. And then they talk a little bit about getting it to boot up on a modern machine. And then we will try or install. Now you see this says try or install. It's supposed to give you that page. I never got that. It just booted directly into this page. So I'm not going to show you it on this uh, web page right here because we're actually going to do it in this video. And Because the installation process is a little bit different. As a matter of fact, the bulk of the changes that they have done from the base of Ubuntu is to change the installation procedure. So I've got that all set up and ready to rock and roll. And we're going to boot it up here and we're going to try and install it in a virtual machine. So this takes it a few moments to get itself together. And you'll notice we're not seeing any splash screen. We're actually seeing the system load itself up. And now we should get a desktop. There we go. This is what the desktop looks like when you boot it from a USB stick, assuming that the boot works the way it's supposed to. And this is it. One of the things I did notice, and I'm going to point this out, is that System76 did not ship the live environment with Gparted. It's not here. 
it also prompts you for updates <laughs> in the live system so whether you want to update the live system or not I don't know you can go right ahead but anyway there is no gparted installed gparted is usually shipped in the live version of most Linux distributions because this is a tool that you use to partition and format hard drives so if you wanted to set that up in advance with this you'd have to actually have an internet connection and go get it and install it if you wanted to do that whereas on pretty much everything else that has a live environment gparted is installed and ready to rock and roll so let's walk through walk through the installer well we'll choose a language that we can do it's pretty easy to do choose a keyboard US English is fine with me next screen please oh we choose a layout here uh, we're gonna erase and install since uh, we're we could do something else I'm assuming that that is the same partition manager that Ubuntu has so we're just gonna let it erase and install and I did choose that correctly yes it says it's going to create one big ext4 partition that's fine ubuntu 17.10 doesn't create swap partitions it creates a swap file so this will do the same thing and this is the screen that you will see until it gets through installing you'll notice that it didn't ask us to create a user account it said nothing about time zone we didn't get to name the machine we didn't get to pick a username nothing no password or anything that is because they have set this up as an OEM install which means that you can install it and then the first person that boots up the machine gets to create an account that would make perfect sense since system 76 is a hardware manufacturer they would want to be able to install this and then hand you the computer or ship it to you and then when you open it up you create your own account so we're gonna let this finish installing and when it's done and there's something ready to do we'll come back I'm not gonna sit here and watch this thing copy files for the next five minutes just like I thought that took about five minutes and you guys didn't have to sit through it and neither did I because I paused the video so let's restart it and see what the actual desktop looks like and see whether it will boot up and all of that happiness uh, hopefully we will have enough virtual box driver support to get a full screen we should if I was actually going to use this for any extended period of time I would install the drivers from VirtualBox but the Linux kernel now ships with basic drivers so you can get full screen support and some other things going so it should be enough for what we want to look at so now that we have rebooted the system it's going to show us a welcome screen and now we can create a user account and make those sorts of changes so let's get started so English US is fine with me that's the default language location services are activated and that means it's going to try and figure out where I am so it can set the time zone that's fine and it got it right I'm East Coast New York here's where you can hook up online accounts this is a gnome desktop feature we will skip that because I don't want the desktop hooked up to my online accounts now we get to create a user account so it asks for my full name it suggests a username and I don't want it I want just Joe and then it prompts me whether I want to encrypt my home folder uh, you can do that if you want to first of all it kills performance second of all it makes it so that if you would ever want to reinstall your operating system let's say that you chose something else at the partitioner and you created a separate partition for your system and a separate partition for your home directory so you had basically two different uh, partitions for each uh, you if you would reinstall in that system partition without reformatting your home partition you wasted your time because if it's encrypted you lose the key and then it won't do that but if you are afraid of somebody getting a hold of your computer and they may uh, you know try and boot it up off of another operating system to get into your stuff it won't work so it's up to you you can do that if you want to I don't bother with it doesn't like my password let's see if it takes it usually uh, those sorts of programs especially in uh, other distributions like Linux Mint if it doesn't like it it won't take it 
So you have to come up with some long, convoluted thing for your password. It says I'm ready to go. Let's see what happens. Well, it appears to be doing something, logging me out. Probably, most likely, logging out that session, and now we will log into the desktop. Well, I'm in, and I am, this is uh, my new desktop, right? Right. So let's see what happens if I open a terminal. That will tell me whether all of that took. I can find out very quickly. Make that a little bigger for you guys to see. Yeah, it's got the right thing. Joe at Pop OS, that's what it names itself. So that's the first thing that comes up. It never asked us what to name the computer. It chose Pop OS. Where do you, would you change that? Well, since this is based on Ubuntu, I kind of sort of know that if I go to Settings, I can change it down here. But the first thing that I want to change is I want to make these fonts bigger so everybody can see it. And I'm just going to use the Accessibility option and switch it to Large Text. So we go down to Details. Now we have the name of the machine. So what do we want to call this? Well, we'll call it, uh, let's just call it P-O-P-V-M, uh, -P just, to, just to make it something different. Click off of there, click here again, whatever it takes to change that. Okay, it changed, all right. So here's where we can create users. Just like in Ubuntu, we have no graphic way to manage groups. but we can add users here. So this is pretty much the, st the stock Ubuntu settings for Ubuntu 17.10. I'm gonna change this background because I think it's uh, very glaring and it makes it difficult for me to see and I'm squinting. I don't like bright backgrounds at all. So we'll choose that background, okay? Let's see what else is in here. We got Pop OS logos of different types and looks to be just a bunch of standard backgrounds. That's pretty cool. I like that one. <laughs> Satellite dish or radio telescope, whatever that is. Let's choose this one and select. Done. So uh, the settings here I know from going through it are pretty much the same settings that you get in Ubuntu 17.10. And one of my complaints with Ubuntu 17.10 is the fact that there are certain things in here that you can't get to like you can't change your fonts you know if you wanted to have direct control over the fonts as far as setting up printers are concerned under devices uh, it appears that there is no way to set up a network printer although i haven't hooked up a printer to one of these machines to find out yet so uh, i know that that uh, in the standard GNOME desktop, when you click on printers these days, you're not getting any place where you can set up a network printer. So you have to know for a fact that you can, uh, you have to know in advance that you need to either log into CUPS, the common Unix printing system, through your web browser. It's usually port 631, or you can use an older utility in here called System Config Printer which gives you access to that. That's number one. Number two, on the user's situation, we do not have any way to manage groups at all. So that is a problem as well. So what do you do if you want to graphically manage groups? Then you have to install an older utility called GNOME System Tools, and that will give you a graphic way of doing that. So let's see what we have installed on Pop! OS. Well, we don't have much here. Let's look under the programs. And we don't have much installed at all. LibreOffice is installed and in its own little folder or group or whatever they call these things. Looks like everything seems to be here. And then we have utilities. Pretty basic set of utilities. So, well, we have fonts here. Does that do it? No, I think that's just a font viewer. Yep, that doesn't change fonts. So, how would you go about doing that? Well, you would have to install something called GNOME Tweak Tool. When you got GNOME Tweak Tool, that would give you direct access to that sort of thing. And probably we're going to end up installing it before this video is over. This is the Pop Shop, which is essentially 
the GNOME software application that currently ships with Ubuntu and a lot of other distributions of Linux. And here is where we can install updates. So we'll go ahead and update all. Why not? While it's doing that, let's, uh, well, no, I don't want to do that. Well, yeah, I did actually, because I wanted to continue looking at what was installed. So we do have Firefox, and for our mail handler, we have Geary, which I find to be an interesting choice. Why Geary is here, I'm not really sure. Ubuntu is shipping with Thunderbird. I know a lot of people these days don't use mail clients, but if I had to choose a mail client, I would absolutely have to use Thunderbird. I can't use Geary. I did use Geary for some time, but then when I started the Easy Linux project, I started hosting my own email, and it doesn't have the features that I need to do that. So anybody who has a lot of email accounts and they're seriously working with email, well, they're going to have to use good old Thunderbird now, aren't they? Now, here's my biggest complaint with this software application called Pop Shop here. That is that some stuff just isn't here. So I'll do a search for Thunderbird. Do you see Thunderbird anywhere on that list? I don't see Thunderbird anywhere on that list. Did I misspell it? No. I may have, but it really doesn't matter because I've looked before. And so there you go. It's not here. And so what you would have to do is you would have to install it from a terminal. Or you could install Synaptic Package Manager and you could do that if you wanted to. By the way, another thing about Pop! OS is that one of the things I'm really used to with Ubuntu and Linux Mint and many other distributions is that there is a shortcut that's already built in, alternate control and T, and when you do that you automatically get a terminal. And so when I've been testing this before I started this video, I have done that about 400 times and it's not here. So <laughs> it doesn't come with a stock GNOME desktop either if you just like choose stock GNOME. I, I, in any other distribution so I usually have to set that that seems to be an Ubuntu related thing so there you go it's not here so we know that we're going to have to install GNOME tweak tool if we want to have control over things like extensions or if we want to do anything with this desktop like create icons on it so let's go ahead and install the GNOME tweak tool first let's see if it's in the software. So I'm just going to put in Tweaks, which is the new name for it. Let's see if it pops up. Uh, quite frankly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't know if it was here or not. We got the Unity Tweak tool popping up. That's interesting. The reason why I say that is, is the colors of this font and the size is extremely difficult for me to see. So we have the Unity Tweak Tool popping up, but I don't see GNOME Tweak Tool. Oh, there it is. Duh. Like I said, I was having difficulty seeing that. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'd have to change this theme. I could not use it. Not on a daily basis. Okay, let's see if it pops up when we install it. Should be in here somewhere. Well, maybe it, it showed up in utilities. Let's see if it's in utilities. Under system. I don't see it. It's probably here and I can't see it, but we can always see if it's here this way. There we go. Tweaks. So if it showed up there, now I know what the icon looked like. It's another thing. I don't know what the icon set looks like. So, Oh, there it is. It's right there. Why? I don't want that. Why did you do that? Because you clicked on it. Oh, okay. All right. There it is. It's right there. Duh. See, that's the other thing. These icons are not familiar to me, so I, it takes me a while to find things. But anyway, we have GNOME Tweak Tool running, and that's the important part here. And I don't want to waste too much time in here, but now we can actually get to things. So we can see what extensions are installed. We can see what's activated on the desktop. It seems that the desktop is active, but they have not turned home on or any other folders or mounted volumes or anything. 
And then we have extensions here. I know that uh, in order to get full GNOME extension support, if you want actual GNOME extensions, you're going to have to install the package called GNOME extensions. And then you will also have to install an add-on in Firefox called GNOME integration. And once you do that, you will have full control over extensions. But it doesn't come shipped by default. Here's where we can look at the fonts, uh, top bar, windows, this sort of thing. So this does not ship in Ubuntu 17.10. It does not ship in Pop! OS. Uh, the reason why, uh, I have heard some people who have said that the developers think that you might be able to break your system, so therefore they don't ship it out of the box. But there's some pretty basic functions that you need here. Like, I think being able to choose the fonts and the DPI and the aliasing is pretty basic stuff. And for a desktop to ship with no way to get to that, without having to install software, I think that's a little bit silly. I said that in the last video I did. So uh, it, as I play more with the Ubuntu spin of the GNOME desktop, and now I'm seeing the same thing in Pop! OS, I really, it's starting to get on my nerves, to be quite honest with you, because this stuff should be here. I'm used to using desktops like Cinnamon and Mate and XFCE, where you have direct control over all this stuff. Even, you know, in KDE. I, why is GNOME just constantly, and now Ubuntu and uh, System76 with their spin as well? They just keep taking features out. For instance, little indicators, the indicators for things like Dropbox and stuff like that. Guess what? They're not here anymore, gang. No, they don't pop up down here. They won't pop up up here. You would have to install an extension to get them, and then people are saying that that's not going to work anyway because they're going to move to GTK4, and they're just saying, well, we don't want to fool with that anymore, so we're going to drop support for it. And uh, that kind of sucks because there are a lot of applications out there. Let's see, Telegram, Dropbox is one, several that use those, and it's kind of nice to have them up there. So the only one that's appearing now is Universal Access. But you're not going to see that, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't like that too much either. Now, before you start thinking that I'm going to be totally, completely negative about this, I'm not. This is a really slick little distribution of Linux, and if you know what you want and you know where to get it and you know how to set it up, you could definitely make this work. But using the quote-unquote pop shop or the software application. Uh, that's hit or miss. It may be here, it might not. Thunderbird was not here, remember? We looked for it. And uh, even if I did mistype that, which I don't know whether I did or not, it doesn't matter. I've looked before. It just doesn't show up. And so we end up with Geary Mail. Also, I've noticed here that we don't have a way to look at the installed software in the Pop Shop, which is something that shows up in GNOME software. So if you wanted to do that, you'd have to, well, essentially, if let's say we wanted to go ahead and uninstall Geary, then, oh, that's already, well, we could find Geary here and uninstall it, but that's not what I wanted to show because it should be able to do it from just the activities menu. So let's go to Geary and show details. And that'll take us straight to it. We will uninstall. So it's, it's not too hard to make changes to the system through this, but don't rely on this as a way to find out what what is you know actually in the system because it's not going to show you everything. What I would install and what I use is a program called Synaptic. This used to ship with Ubuntu by default. And several years ago, actually, it's been quite some time, they took it out. And it's not available in Ubuntu anymore. It's available in Linux Mint. It comes pre-installed and ready to rock and roll. And, but it's not in Ubuntu anything at this point. So let's go and let's open Synaptic. And show you it. I mean, most people who have followed my videos have seen Synaptic. And they know what it looks like, but... Let's just make sure it works. And the reason why I say that is, is that some folks have told me that in Ubuntu 17.10, depending on whether you're using Wayland or whether you're using X for your display server, uh, Synaptic does or doesn't work or hasn't worked. There's a bug with it. Maybe that's fixed by now. I don't know. It's worked every time that I've needed it. So Synaptic, no, it's not all pretty and graphic, but it will show you every single package available in the system. So if I go to search, 
and I type in Thunderbird. Let's do the search. Scroll down a little bit, it should pop right up. There is Thunderbird. So to install Thunderbird, just double click it to market, apply, and it's going to go ahead and, and install Thunderbird. It is that simple to work with, and um, I enjoy using Synaptic for that reason. It gives you complete access to the system. Also, you can set up things like repositories and updates, and you can do it all through here. And uh, you can there's all kinds of things in there. So, yeah, uh, okay, so. Like I said, I have mixed feelings about this because it is a lean and mean desktop experience and it's a great place uh, to start if you know the system, know what you want, and like the GNOME desktop. But for me to use it, I'd have to install a bunch of software, which is fine, and then I would probably have to go through and change this font because I, I can't see it and I don't like it and it just messes with my eyes. I, the, the older I get, the more darker fonts I, I like because they're easy to see. I mean, darker desktop themes. I like dark themes because for me, they're just easy to see. And so that's why I use them. But yeah, this may be great for you. You might want it. The more important thing to say about this is the fact that this is what people are going to get when they buy a System76 computer. And some of them, of course, are going to be like, well, I'm going to put whatever Linux I want on it, which is perfectly all right. That's no problem. Most of the people that I know that buy these machines install what they want on it anyway, and then they go to System76 and find out exactly what tweaks need to be done. So that's the, the it's not that really that big a deal. But there are some people out there, this is going to be, if somebody bought one of these computers for them for a gift and said, okay, here's Linux, this is what they're going to get. And it is not a very friendly user experience. It is okay if you use what's installed, but if you have any specific needs, then you're going to have to go off and figure out that, well, if I, I can't stand, the, the fonts are too small for me. Well, how do I change it? Well, I've got to install software to make me get the fonts on there. I have to put GNOME Tweak Tool on. You see what I'm saying? It's not already there. It's something that has to be added to. There's not even a whole lot. There's not even a music player installed on this system. There's uh, other than uh, videos, which seems to be the only thing installed. But I don't see something like Rhythmbox. I don't see something like Clementine, any of the, the popular music players. So nothing's there. And you're going to have to go out and install whatever you need to make it work. I guess maybe System76 figures that that's what people want. Because if you are buying a machine that is made to run Linux in the first place, then you will probably have a pretty good idea of what you want to do with it once you get it. That, that, that is definitely true, so we'll say that. But do I think this is a step forward in the user experience? I don't know. I don't think I'd go that far. I think it's another spin of Ubuntu with a slightly different desktop and a modified theme and the installer has been changed a little bit to suit system 76's needs and that's what i think this is so take it or leave it that is pop os and quite honestly this is probably going to be the last time that i talk about it and before i wrap up the video i want to say something about this is that one of the things about linux that's really cool is the fact that anybody can create a linux distribution if they want to it's kind of like oh, well, I'm just going to pick up my marbles and I'm going to go home and I'm going to make my own. I mean, that seems to be the attitude. That's exactly what happened with System76. They weren't really huge fans of the direction that Ubuntu was going in with their GNOME desktop experience that they came up with in Ubuntu 17.10. So uh, they decided that they were going to just do their own thing, which is awesome. And, and Linux allows you to do that, right? But the downside of all of this is the fact that we have all of this fragmentation of effort where people are like, well, I'm just going to make my own. We have thousands of Linux distributions out there, and we have all of these people who are just reinventing the wheel. They're just taking all the same little pieces, and they're putting them together in slightly different ways, and they're putting a theme on them, and then they're calling them a distribution of Linux. And there is a part of me that goes, especially since I try all the time to get new users to come to Linux, that doesn't like this because it's fragmentation. It's more confusion. People don't know where to start or what to do. And this doesn't help. <laughs> it 
just it's not bad it's okay it's a good little just it's you notice i'm using this in a virtual machine and it has been really responsive really responsive i do have to say that for it it works really well and it uh probably at this point since i've opened up all that stuff it's sucking up probably about a gig of memory with caching and all that stuff and it's still chugging right along i bet we're using swap space too because this is a small vm so let's take a look at that real quick before we wrap up the video um, no no that's not what i wanted i wanted free dash h to see what we got going on okay so yeah we are using 1.0 gigabytes of memory about 14 megabytes of swap and it's still really fast that's very cool now the command that i got confused on there let's do you name r we'll see what kernel we're running and we got 413 generic dash 16 after the updates all right there you go pop os ladies and gentlemen it seems to work really nice would i install this on a computer other than a system 76 no <laughs> If I bought a computer that had uh, Pop! OS on it from System76, would I use it? No. I would probably install Linux Mint or Ubuntu Mate or something else because there's not enough here to make me go, ooh, ah, ooh, ee, this is great. I just really don't understand this idea of we're going to make the user experience better by removing features. That seems to be a GNOME desktop thing. It's like oh we don't feel like fooling with that anymore it's problematic and we can't fix it so uh, well, I'll just pull it out of the system okay whatever <laughs> so this is what keeps me using desktops like cinnamon and mate and xfce and kde and I have said enough I think I've gotten my point across thank you for watching the video I do appreciate it please feel free to check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And also check out freedompenguin.com for lots of really cool stories about Linux. And uh, if you need new hardware, I still recommend System76 for the machines. Their machines are awesome. Whether you want to keep Pop! OS, eh. <laughs>